Guys, I have had the 240 for about six weeks now and I have not formally introduced her. This is just gonna be a quick run through of the car. So firstly, going over the exterior of the car, as you can see, I got in mineral white metallic. And as you can see, I put a carbon fiber front lip on the car. I've relocated the license plate to the side so I can avoid drilling the holes. And the kidney grills are still stock, but I do plan to replace them with the black and performance ones in the near future. Moving over to this side, you can see I chose BMW's 461M style wheels. The car can be optioned with either the 436M or the 461M. I chose this one because I like the look of it more. And it came with Michelin Pilot Super Sports. So the width of the wheels are 7.5 in the front, 8 in the rear. Moving over to this side, I did replace it with the M style mirror caps in carbon fiber finish. And the original ones are actually silver. Going over to the back. Again, I'm not going to go over this in too much detail because I've had so many videos of the car already. We all know what the exterior looks like. And I had the carbon spoiler put on as well. Now moving over to the moonroof. I originally wanted to option it out just to keep a clean white look on the top, but I decided not to. I was able to get some good shots with the GoPro because of it. Okay, now let's go over one of the features of the car, which is the comfort access. So having the key in my pocket, here it is. I'm able to just open the door by sticking my hand in the door handle and opening the door. And to lock it, I just put my finger on this little area here and it locks the car. Okay, now moving over to the interior of the car, as you can see, I chose the Coral Red Dakota leather. And I find that most people who get BMWs option the car this way. They have the white exterior with a red interior. Can't really go wrong with it. I mean, you see it often, but you can't go wrong with it. it. Looks pretty good. And how I chose to differentiate the car a little bit was getting the fine line streamwood trim. Over here, I don't see many cars with this, and I really like the glossy finish. And the reason I went with this is because I've seen most 240s or 235s with the silver accents. So I'll go over where you can see this trim. Over here on the left door handle, the left air vent, the center console area the dash and the right door handle so before entering the car you can see this right away the m240i logo okay so now let's sit in the car I will turn it on because it is really hot today my favorite part about the car is right here I got the six-speed um, for anyone who saw my first video of me picking up the car, I did have a little brief caption there stating that I've never driven a manual before and I was able to drive this car off the lot very easily. So to start the car, push the clutch in, push to start. I'm going to turn the AC on because it's really hot today. So on the driver's door, I can control both windows. This controls the mirrors, so it's set to the left right now, and I'll explain why later. And this controls the folding mirrors, so that I press it. Folds, and I press it again. Unfolds. And this will control the direction of the mirror that you have it set to. So, the reason I have it on this side is because when you set it on this side, when you put it into reverse, like I will now, that mirror will go down. Now, it won't do that if this is set to the right because you're trying to take control of it obviously so this is the headlight settings i always have it set to auto i never see the need to change it this little wheel here controls the lighting on the dash i can't show it right now but it controls how bright the lights are on the dash now i gotta quickly open the door to show you underneath here so again best part about this car is three pedals and i'm loving it so far you got the m dead pedal and I got something coming up for these soon. Over here on the left side, you have the trunk release and the hood release. It has a two times there to show that you have to pull it twice in order to fully release the hood. It's a good safety feature. Now going over the door, there is a decent amount of room here for any sort of cups, any extra stuff you want to put in. I have a set of shades in there, just random stuff. A Swiss army knife. Now just on the side of the steering column, you got the heated steering wheel button to turn it on and off 
In here you can control um, your positioning of the steering wheel. And as you can see on this side, I don't have any speakers here. That's because I didn't opt in for the Harman Kardon sound system upgrade. I didn't feel it was necessary. The stock one sounded fine to me during the test drive. I won't go over the iDrive features. I won't go over too much of the setting stuff. I can make another video for that in another time because it would take way too much time. So I'm going to go over the physical features, maybe a quick run through of the dash here. I can cycle through the dash by pressing this button on the turn signal. So I'm pressing it once. It shows me my average gas consumption. Um, my current one, which is zero because I'm not currently on the throttle. This is my average speed the date today and how many kilometers I have left moving on to here this is the button for traction control different modes so this is sport um, we have comfort in the middle then we have eco pro by default it'll start up on comfort so pressing this it'll activate the parking sensors now when you put into reverse the reverse camera comes up and when you turn the wheel these lines turn as well now quickly going over to center console you got volume control, various modes, FM, AM, and these are the programmable keys. I have them set to different settings. I can quickly go over them. This is Bluetooth for my phone. This is for FM. This is for AM. This is for weather. This is a sports displays, which is really cool. Shows your current output for horsepower and torque. So when I rev it, here I got shuffle because I often have to turn that on for my phone. Um, this turns off the display. Okay, this is an eject button for a CD player. Yeah, it still has a CD player. Go figure. Here's a previous and next button for your music. Here's the driver's side heated seats. This is the passenger side. This is for the front windshield. This is for the rear windshield. This controls the various settings of the climate control. This is for the left side here. You can see I'm turning it and it changes here. And on that side as well. AC, max AC, or just auto, which I often have it set to. Now here's the control for the iDrive system. Got media, communications, menu, map, navigation, back and option. And this goes in many directions. And because I have the premium package with the upgraded LCD screen, this knob is a little bit different than the one you'd normally get without the package. So one of my favorite features about the car is the M steering wheel. It feels so good to hold in your hand, it has very good grip, and it's bolstered really nicely. On the wheel itself, you can see the controls. This is the cruise control settings. So you got the calls, voice control, the volume controls, and this is, works as a way to navigate through the little screen here. Okay, now moving over to the other side of the car is the passenger side. Not much to go over here. You got the glove compartment. Decent amount of space. There's not much space in there, but it's a good amount. And again, I can't say enough how good this red looks in the car. It really adds a sense of luxury. Now moving over up here is the moonroof controls. I'm going to quickly pull it up. And you got two options here. You could simply press it to fold up like so, or you can close it. Or you can just have it open all the way. So I'm quickly just going to close that again. Now, let's get in the back seat. So let's go over the seat controls real quick. So this is how you can save profiles of the seat right here. This is where you can control the seat. This is for the lumbar support here. Oh, and another feature I want to go over is this thigh extension for the seat. In case your legs are a little bit longer. And you can move the seat forward and backward with just this button here. Now quickly folding it over. Now hop in the back. Okay, so this is the back. I don't have much headroom here. Um, yeah, once I sit up straight, my head's already touching the, the roof. Pretty much. It's not that comfortable. <laughs> I have my seat pretty far back, so don't let this be an example of the legroom back here. So I just barely have enough 
right now. I'm already rubbing against the seat here. But again, that's because I have my seat very far back and that's just kind of how I like to sit. You also have some controls here for the rear passengers. Um, you got the headrests which fold so you can pull them up, you can fold them down. I like to have them folded down just for increased visibility in the rear windshield. Over here, kind of a dead space. I think you can add some accessories here to make it more usable. Just a place to put your phone. Maybe like that, I don't know. Rear passengers also have some light controls here. And probably one of the coolest parts I like about the car is right here. When I found this out, I was pretty mind blown. Here, check this out. It's not over yet. Oh, two cup holders, there you go. Because you'd normally find them on the side, but as you can see, there's none here. So there you go. It's a little bit accommodating. Oh, it's not done. There's more, what? Oh, and it is a pass through to the trunk. So as you can see, it's capable of a 40-20-40 split, which is really cool. So now let's go over to the trunk. It's roomier than the BRZ though, I can confirm that. Alright, I've got quite a bit of stuff back here, but this is a space here. And I put extra tools here, just in case. Always good to have some tools in the car. Now, to push the seats down the lever here and you can pull the lever here when I installed the dine-in mid pipe I had to transport the OEM pipe it reached all the way from here and it had to sit up on the dash so just want to confirm it is possible to bring the OEM one back without cutting it any further so that's it for the car not much more else to go over here loving the car so far it's been more than good enough for my needs so far the power, the luxury, the features, everything that came with the car, I've been really happy with so far. And it's such a good looking car. How many times have I said that in all my videos so far? Okay, so that'll do it for the quick run through of the M240i. I hope this has helped some people who may be on the fence, who might be interested in buying this car and just didn't know too much about it. So that's it. Let me know if there's something I missed, if there's a feature you wanted to see that I maybe didn't go over, or if you're curious about anything on this car at all, let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching.